Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I am Dr. Pramod Malik from Department of Laws, Bhagat Phool Singh Mahila Vishwidyale, Khanpur Kala, Haryana. Today we are going to discuss another main topic relating to patent that is infringement and remedies. Before that, this topic we will cover, we will discuss in this lecture, I want to tell you about the basic of patent, what is the objective of patent and the cases where a patent can be infringed and what are the remedies which are given under the Indian Patent Act. So, before that we start the infringement remedy, I want to discuss the main definition of patent as this is a monopoly right granted to the inventor by the government for limited period of time. So, this is a monopoly right where the patentee can exclude other persons from using that particular patented article. So, it will be valid for 20 years. After that, that patent will become to the public domain where any person from general public can use that patent for his own. So, another characteristics of this patent is it is not absolute in nature. So, if someone has become a patentee or owner of a patent by inventing new thing, he cannot become a king he has some limitations also as trips agreement has also given limitation relating to the in for the public interest also or for the national interest also. So, here although 20 years is given as a monopoly right, but he has to take concern of this we can say accessibility, affordability and uh, this public policy also. So, another concern is that is it is not territory, it is territorial nature, we can say it is at not international level. So, patent can be granted for a particular territory, for example, in India one has filed a patent, he will get rights only in Indian territory, but if he want to file a patent or get profit from patent in Pakistan or USA, he has again to file or registered his patent in other countries for example, Pakistan or USA. So, we can say it is territorial nature also. So, from this we can say it has its own objective as it is based on the principle of quid pro quo. So, here when it is uh, some person discloses his invention to the general public or given every document relating to that to the government of India, then that is on the base of there must be encouragement of scientific research, new technology or industrial progress. That is why this patent act was passed in 1970. So, Indian Supreme Court has passed this judgment in Vishwanath Prasad Radhesyam versus Hindustan metal industry where this objective was defined. So, patent is also granted to the inventor which is new, useful and industrial applicable. So, these are the three essential where we can get patent for the invention. So, after going through the registration, this patentee will get these rights. If someone is violated these rights, then it becomes infringement. So, these are these we can say these rights are right to exclusive use, right to assign, right to give license as monopoly right is there. So, he has discretionary power to give these patent to anybody who fulfill his conditions also, but that must be also reasonable. So, he has right to apply for patent of addition also if new improvement is made in previously granted patent, he can apply for the patent of addition. So, he has right to surrender also if he is not going to renew that particular patent, then then patent will come to an end. He has also right to surrender to the patent office and he has also right to relinquish. He can release that patent in the favor of journal public. So, he has also right to file a case in case of infringement there is very important right because these rights of patentees are economic in nature. So, he has also right to issue duplicate patents if there is circumstances exists. So, now we are coming for the main topic that is patent infringement. So, how patent infringement comes into 
uh, or taken place. So, if when the patent is considered to be exclusive monopoly right, as we have discussed the definition, it excludes other persons from using, selling, distributing the invention of innovators. So, the all persons are debar from using that. That is why this patent is also called negative in nature. So, no person without permission of the patentee can we can say use or we can say sell or distribute that particular thing without permission of patentee. So, when someone do any of these work, any of these acts that amounts to infringement. So, infringement is just a violation of these rights. So, patent infringement is also illegal as patent act uh, has in this 1970 has given specific provision from section 104 to 111 where these infringements are there or the remedies are there where if someone has violated the provisions of Indian Patent Act or violates the monopoly right of any inventor. So, it is also a violation of right conferred by patent we have already discussed. So, anyone who use the patented process it may use process also it may use product also. So, or uses exercise sale distribute manufacture patented goods without authorization. So, two things are there first is patented process and second is patented product. So, if any of these two things can be violated by third party or the stranger the patentee has right to file a case against that infringer. So, in case of infringement this district court and high court has jurisdiction to try and entertain this case. So, district court is a main thing where a patentee can file a case for uh, uh, this damages, injunction or other remedies also. So, section 104 to 115 of Indian Patent Act is especially uh, dealing with this infringement of patent. So, patent may be infringed by taking part only of invention. So, what I am saying is that it is not necessary you should take patent as a whole. If you are using some part of patent also that also amounts to infringement. It is also depend on whether the part for which protection is asked is a new or material part. So, it is also depend on you which part you are taken whether it is a substantial part of that or whether it is a general part of that. So, it that must be comes into consideration whether it is a obvious or non obvious. So, it is also an important factor to determine whether infringement is taken place or not. So, I want to discuss one important case here relating to infringement in Raj Prakash versus Mangat Ram Chaudhary it is very important case where it was uh, this infringement was defined it is deemed to be infringement when infringing goods are made with same object though with minor variation. So, as we have already discussed in a previous slide ki a patent may be infringed by taking part only if you are only taking some part that also amounts to infringement if you are taking the important part from that. So, here also in this case it was also saying ki some utensils for example, they are made, uh, making or some other part you are making. So, if you are making some minor variation in that particular thing that also amounts to infringement. So, it is also depend on the substance the equivalence of the patented articles. The articles whether uh, the, the product which is made by the inventor has to be see whether that equivalence of that patented article which is substantially nature is taken by another infringer or not. So, that is the main thing relating to infringement. So, one another case we can see here ki how these uh, infringements are taken place. So, in Lakshmi Dath Roopchand versus Nanko where the plaintiff was proprietor of patented process. So, here in uh, earlier cases we are talking about the patented articles or product patents. So, here when someone is patented process of manufacturing uh, this utensils. So, in that case also you can file a case for infringement if someone is taking same process for making utensil or making that particular uh, this product. So, in this case also if the defendant is making this uh, same uh, this uh, utensil with same process which is 
patented by plaintiff then he is liable for injunction or liable for damages. So, in this case also the plaintiff firm become patentee. Now, the per individual person is there who has invented something, but firm is there in his name for example, Lakshmi Dutt versus Roop Chand. So, this whole firm is there he can become now patentee. So, if they have filed a suit that is that is maintainable. Now, the case is relating to the locus tendi of that particular registered firm. So, registered firm is assignee. So, now question arise whether the inventor himself or the assignee who can file a case. Any person file a case whether it is a uh, we can say patentee himself or his authorized agent or his assignee or legal representative of that particular uh, we can say inventor. So, these are the civil remedies which are given under this uh, this Indian Patent Act 1970s. We can say first remedy is a civil remedy, second remedy is a criminal remedy, third remedy is a administrative remedy. We will discuss all remedy in detail one by one. So, under civil remedies we can say first type of this is damages. So, that plaintiff has now right to file a case for damages if infringement is taken place. We will discuss number of cases in later slides where there are so many uh, courts are there high court or supreme court where judgment is given relating to damages. In so many cases court has discretion to give damages also or if that infringement is going on then to restrain that, in, uh, that uh, infringement the plaintiff can file a case for permanent injunction as well as temporary injunction. So, in this in these particular just we are discussing the types of remedy after that we will discuss number of cases where uh, these all these type of remedies are granted by different high courts or different district courts. So, damages can be granted if someone is taking profit by infringement then plaintiff has right to file a case for damages then damages can be granted to, to that plaintiff uh, uh, by direction to the court. So, now second this remedy is account of profit. So, account of profit is different from damages where the, the defender is taking profit and profit can be cal calculated from the what he has taken whole minus expenditure, what he has earned minus expenditure. So, whole earning minus expenditure the absolute profit he has taken that account for that uh, this uh, the plaintiff can claim that profit also from uh, this defendant. So, damages can be given as a whole damages can be exemplary damages, damages can be simple damages. We can say two three types of damages are here we, that plaintiff can also claim simple damages or exemplary damages. So, that that defendant or other whole world may be restrained by seeing the exemplary damages. So, so many times in Samsung or we can say Apple or we can say Microsoft exemplary damages are granted or passed against the defendant. So, that other should not infringe those patents. So, next this uh, type of civil remedy is injunction. So, we can say injunction is restraining someone from doing further act. So, we can f go for two types of injunctions in copyright there are so many inj type of injunction we have already discussed Mareva injunction is there, John Dowdry is there yeah, or we can say dynamic injunction is there, but patent as it is monopoly in character mo and uh, this uh, here we can go for the case for temporary uh, permanent injunction and permanent injunction. Uh, case will take I think 2, 3, 4 years until that if plaintiff want to restrain the defendant for infringement of that particular product then he can also file an application for temporary injunction under order 39 rule 1 and 2. So, under this uh, this is comes under CPC and if that is going to file a case for permanent injunction for that he can file a case under the specific relief act. So, he has uh, this uh, dif uh, different alternatives uh, different options for filing a case. So, he can also go for the damages or account of profit or he can also go for the injunction. So, he can also this court may also pass a ex parte interim injunction. 
so many times the defendant could not appear before the court because he want to carry on that infringement of that particular patent in that case the court can also grant ex parte interim injunction uh, uh, when the case was going on so here this uh, plaintiff can also claim or seize that particular uh, the uh, infringe material also forfeit that and also right to destroy that material as per accordance with law. So, these are the civil remedies where we can say on this petitioner or we can say um, these patentee or the inventor has right to go for that it depends on the will of that particular patentee or uh, in which type of remedy is going to avail. So, if he is going to go for the permanent injunction then he has to file a uh, this application for temporary injunction as we have discussed under order 39 rule 1 and 2 of CPC. So, three things he is going to uh, this prove in so uh, we will discuss some cases also where some companies could not prove prima facie evidence a prima facie case. So, but three requirements under this temporary injunction is first is prima facie evidence, second is balance of convenience, third is irreparable loss. So, prima facie case the yeah, evidence means at the first instance whether it is appeared to the court or whether it is apparent to the general public key sum infringement is taken place. So, from its first instance when it looks to the court some type of infringement is going on some type of violation is going on of patent then he can go for the second point that is balance of convenience. Now, he has to see in which uh, this side this balance is having more weightage. So, in that case if the uh, in uh, the the balance uh, the uh, one side uh, for example, the plaintiff has more weight in his ba balance then the court may pass a temporary injunction in his favor. So, it is not necessary plaintiff can only file the case for this application of temporary injunction it is right given to both whether plaintiff or defendant anyone can file a case against each other for application of this temporary injunction. So, if balance is find out by the court. So, a court can go for the seeing whether there is chances of irreparable loss. If the remedy is not granted under this order 39 rule 1 and 2 then court has to see if there is go, uh, irreparable loss is going on which cannot be covered by just monetary compensation then court will be happy to give this uh, this temporary injunction in favor of uh, this plaintiff or we can say applicant. So, this is very important thing this is given for a just like a quick remedy till the case will be disposed of or till the further order. So, it depends on the judge from which date he is going to uh, give this temporary injunction. So, till the next date or till the case is disposed of. So, we can also see there are some criminal remedies also. So, in this case uh, we can say criminal remedies imprisonment is there or penalty there penalty may be from one year if someone is uh, show himself as a uh, patentee without registration or someone has also taken some uh, type of we can say certificate which is in violation of the patent act then they can also go for the imprisonment or penalty. So, now it is the this uh, patentee has right ki in which type he is going to uh, take option. So, we can see here the latest case just few days back this apple watches dispute we can say the apple watches has a two series series 9 and ultra 2 which was go, he is uh, this selling on the, uh, this apple website and people are purchasing that, but one company is there Massimo. So, this Massimo has filed a case against apple as this apple company is using the technology which is patented by this Massimo company which is a medical device maker that has patent in some particular this app and that that particular technology and that technology has been inserted in this apple watches. So, apple has withdraw temporarily these two watches series 9 and ultra 2 
from its website. So, this US International Trade Commission has decided this till now whether now it in favor of Massimo, now it depends on Apple whether they are going to file an appeal on against that uh, this order or not. So, this is very good judgment where we can say this injunction is granted against the Apple by this US International Trade Commission. So, this is a very latest case few days back. So, we can also take another example and this case is related to the this uh, we can say DTI this engine technology where Bajaj Auto Company uh, has filed a case against the TVS Motor Company. So, both these companies are related with the manufacturing of two wheelers. So, under two wheelers there is an engine and that engine is we can say patented by this Bajaj and that is DTS I that amounts to this is digital twin spark ignition engine. So, this engine is manufactured or patented by Bajaj and this another this company TVS is using same technology in their motor bikes. So, this Bajaj company filed a case against this TVS for infringing its patent which were designed to improve the fuel efficiency and performance of two stroke this and four stroke engine by using the two spark plugs instead of one. So, he has Bajaj has used first time this technology in this particular motor bikes. So, now this uh, TVS is using this without permission and it is saying just this is a generic thing, but Madras High Court passed a judgment against this TVS and restraining TVS from uh, this manufacturing further uh, his uh, its bike and he has all this Madras High Court has also awarded damages to Bajaj and directed this TVS to give compensation or damages to the Bajaj company also. So, very good case, uh, case where this injunction is also granted and damages is also granted by this uh, uh, we can say by way of infringement of patent. So, we can see another example here N NRDC National Research Development Corporation India versus New Delhi Cloth and Journal Mills Company. So, in this case we can say that this court has granted the temporary injunction by going through these three cases. If we see this case this court found all these three essentials of temporary injunction and this uh, I, the Delhi High Court has granted a this uh, temporary injunction in favor of NRDC as this case has fulfilled the three essentials. You can go this case on the website also. So, another most important case which is related to the this patent infringement. So, it is a related to the Novartis which is a very uh, big company big MNC which belongs to uh, Switzerland. So, this Novartis company filed and one application for which we can say evergreening of patent under section 3 D. So, what is case the dispute was relating to the patentability of the Novartis drug Glyvec. So, this Glyvec is for treatment of this leukemia and other cancers also. Now, he has applied for patent of this beta crystalline form of imatinib or this and that is active ingredient in Glyvec. So, now the question arise ki whether the, the thing which is already existing and you have uh, this uh, not making the criteria of novelty is comes under the patent or not. So, patent office Kolkata which is the main patent office of India rejected the patent application as it did not meet the criteria for novelty and inventiveness which are the main requisite of patent under the Indian Patent Act. So, although appeal was made to the high court and the supreme court by the Novartis, but, but the case was dismissed and this high court and supreme court has also given judgment in favor of the lower court. So, it is a very good judgment which changed the I think history of Indian Patent Act as this Novartis is claiming section 3 D of Indian Patent Act unconstitutional. So, now it is also proved this section 3 D is not unconstitutional, but it is we can say constitutional it is legal, but 
we can say ki if you are giving different use of the same thing or if you are creating a new thing by similar this ingredient that does not amounts to patent. So, very good judgment is given by the Supreme Court of India and Kolkata this high uh, this patent office also. So, this uh, we can uh, also see here the Supreme Court decision was based on the interpretation of section 3 D of Indian Patent Act which prohibit the grant of patent for invention that are just new form of existing substance. So, we have already discussed if you are making in just either new use or new form of existing substances that does not amount to patent. So, unless they demonstrated a significantly enhanced therapeutic efficacy. So, there must be enhancement of efficacy yeah, increase in some uh, utility then that can be covered under this section 3 D. So, as we have already discussed the section 3 which are related to the inventions which are not patentable. So, that is a important uh, leading judgment of uh, we can say uh, patent act. So, another important judgment which is uh, filed by this one uh, the company Samsung versus Ericsson uh, which was filed in 2014. In this the pet, this Samsung filed a lawsuit against the Ericsson in India claiming that Ericsson was demanding excessive royalty for its patent which is related to the wireless technology telecommunication technology. So, here now what Samsung is saying? Samsung is saying ki this Ericsson is demanding huge royalty, but and uh, uh, which was against the this friend doctrine. This friend is fair reasonableness and non discriminatory principle it is given for the license because there are so many licenses are there in uh, we can say mobile or laptops or computers or different machines are there. So, now there is some principle for example, standard essential patents or friend doctrines are there. So, we have to see ki whether there is an fairness or reasonableness and non discriminatory treatment by the these company with each other not because without one technology a mobile cannot be manufactured properly. So, all we have to come together and cooperate together to make uh, this best uh, use of best technology. So, here we can say Samsung is saying that the demand was unjustified and violate this principle for licensing, but when this Ericsson is saying that without permission they are using our technology and no proper negotiation was made between this Samsung with the Ericsson. So, court when going went through these facts the court has given the uh, this injunction against Samsung also and Delhi High Court decided in this case in favor of Ericsson. As he is saying this royalty was reasonable, royalty was reasonable and it was Samsung's fault as Samsung has not negotiated properly and bona fidely for this getting licenses. So, it is also plenty fault. So, we can say plaintiff should come with the clean hand in this case plaintiff has not come to the court with clean hand. So, for that court has also given the injunction also as we have this uh, discuss in the civil remedies and he also order Samsung to pay 11 million dollar as a royalty. So, this is a very good example of civil remedy where injunction is also granted and second this damages is also granted. So, we can see we can study this case for civil remedies also. So, now we are going to discuss another case which is very important case also Ross versus Sipla is Ross filed a patent infringement lawsuit against the Sipla where the Sipla Indian company which is selling the generic version of the cancer drug this Tersiva. So, this is a Reus is a French, uh, French name which is also this taken by the Swiss company which is dealing with this uh, so many uh, we can say very this is very uh, uh, large uh, multinational company which is also dealing with the pharmaceutical in, in India also. So, court has not restrained even Sipla in this case although he is manufacturing genic version of this cancer drug. So, because it was against the public interest in this case also this uh, this petitioner has not even uh, this prove its prima facie case also and balance of convenience is also not in favor of this uh, petitioner. So, it, even though no permanent injunction was granted, but Sipla has to cause 
कॉस्ट एंड गिव अकाउंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट ऑफ रुपीज फाइव लैख रुपीज एज देर इज नो प्राइम एफ आई केस वॉज प्रूव ऑन द पेटेंट इन्फ्रिजमेंट सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट केस वेयर दिस हाई कोर्ट हैज टू डिसाइड द केसेज बिकॉज दिज पेटेंट केसेज इन फार्मास्यूटिकल आर सो मेनी टाइम्स वेरी दिस टेक्निकल केसेज आर देयर एज बी सी सेक्शन थ्री डी और सेक्शन थ्री ई एफ दीज आर द जज हैज टू डिसाइड एज पर इट्स ओन माइंड बिकॉज डिफरेंट इंटरप्रिटेशन आर देयर रिलेटिंग टू दैट बट इन दिस केस द इंजंक्शन वॉज नॉट ग्रांटिड इवन दो रुपीज फाइव लैक वॉज ग्रांटेड टू दिस पर्टिकुलर पेटिशनर सो there is one another case which is monsanto versus nujividu seeds so here this monsanto company is a we can say big mnc which deals with the this particular seeds and these fertilizers now this is also taken over by the buyers so that company has has license of its patent technology for bt cotton seeds which has he is selling to number of companies in india so this particular indian company or this this nuji vidu she, she is another company who is taking or giving the fee for this uh, taken from the monsanto and distributing to the all over india but when there is one price control act was passed by the government of india relating to this bt cotton or some dispute was there there was cancellation of all these uh, licenses so there was no case of these royalties or all these things but in spite of these terminating licenses this noji vidu company is not stopped from selling uh, this monsanto seeds so now it is a clear prime fsi case was made out against this uh, defendant and this defendant is also we can say balance of convenience was also there for that this court has granted a injunction against uh, this defendant and held to pay the damages also so here we can say this both things are also given as a civil remedy and as an injunction also and as for the damages also so monsanto there are so many other cases uh, filed by the monsanto against the so many other companies because this deals with the fertilizers also and this deals with the we can say seeds also which are related with the bt cotton and other gm uh, these foods articles so we can also discuss another case here erection versus microsmax so why all these we are uh, this discussing these cases because from here we can see how the court is granting the injunctions for the damages or both in one cases so th these are comes into the civil remedies as we have discussed the apple case also similarly in this case this erection versus Mi micromax the micromax was using the scp that is called standard essential patents so the this standard essential patents are patents which are specially related with uh, or we can say which are necessary for that particular whole uh, this for example for mobile or laptops or for particular technology so this standard essential patent is related with 2g and 3g technology so this uh, ericsson has a patent in this uh, particular 2g and 3g technology and uh, this uh, when ericsson is uh, this uh, seeing that the micro max is using this technology without any permission without any license so he that erickson has filed a case against this micromax so delhi high court has this uh, granted the injunction also and directed the micromax to pay damages to that uh, this erickson also but there was a huge uh, difference between the uh, what they have uh, we can say decided or what the court has passed so but at last compromise was taken uh, between both the parties and case was decided but now we can see here delhi high court has granted injunction as well as damages in this cases so we can see there are some exceptions also where the court has also power to grant relief in case of groundless threat of infringing proceeding so where one person is threatening another person again and again by either by circular or we can say advertisements or by communication it this communication may be in the form of oral or in writing so we can see section 106 where 
any person who is interested or he is going to file a case or going to file a patent. So, when he is threatening another person, it does not mean ki another person just uh, walk, uh, walk back, no. Now, here court will also help for that. So, any person aggrieved by this type of threatening can bring a case against that person praying for the for, uh, following relief. So, here in these cases, these are the specific uh, exception where such type of threatening is there. So, that person against whom threat is made can go to the court and ask the court for the declaration. Declaration means the threat are unjustified. So, now the thing is that that, that is the main thing that has to be decided by the court whether this this uh, threat is justified or unjustified. So, the court will grant we can say declaration to that effect also. So, court can also grant injunction also. So, in CPC uh, or we can say in specific effect either you can go for that injunction in CPC it is for temporary injunction or for a specific effect it is for uh, we can say here permanent injunction. So, you can also file a case for declaration relating to that any property for any we can say legal ownership or to we can say to this also whether any threat is justified or not. Similarly, you can also uh, file a case for declaration to that particular IP also whether that IP belong to you, you or not who is the owner of that particular property. So, that declaration may be uh, this uh, uh, we can say pass a decree of declaration by the court also. So, such damage he can also give declaration, he can also this court can also give injunction or court can also give damages also if he has sustained from that particular threat. So, this is a very important section, it is also taken care of the persons, innocent persons who are so many time threatened by so many other companies or so many other persons. So, there are number of instances where companies are threatening another company. It, it, so, many times it is justified and so many times it is unjustified. So, special provision has inserted by this uh, Indian Patent Act relating to protection of all these persons. So, here also we can say the in such case the defendant proves that act in respect of which proceeding were threat were uh, threatened constitute or if done and would constitute an infringement of patent or right arising from publication of complete specification in respect of the claim of a specification not shown by plaintiff to be invalid the court may grant to the plaintiff all or any of the relief played for. So, if we see ki if the plaintiff which he is claiming is invalid or the now complete specification is also not filed by that or publication is not made, made of complete specification of the plaintiff. So, all these cases then that threat amounts to uh, infringement or uh, so, uh, threat is unjustified or if infringement of pa patent is invalid then court may grant to the plaintiff who has filed this case under this section 106 which may constitute the which is related to either circular advertisement or oral communication or written communication. So, very inter interesting this section is there which protect the interest of uh, this innocent users. So, here special explanation is also given under this what is saying existence of a patent does not constitute a threat of proceeding within the meaning of this section. So, if there is a patent is already exist it does not mean it will be a threat of proceeding. So, mere notification of that particular thing if a, so, someone has a patent in his name. So, if someone is giving the notification in the newspaper that does not amount to threat it is the legal right of the patentee to give notification in the newspaper, notification we can say advertisement uh, we can say in te television or in any broadcasting mode to protect its patent. So, special explanation is given uh, under this uh, to protect the interest of patentee also. So, in this section both uh, clauses are there to protect the interest of here uh, this uh, patentee here and to protect the other innocent users also 
where such type of threat is here. So, very important section relating to that. So, we can also see the jurisdiction. So, section 4 specifically deals with the jurisdiction. So, jurisdiction means which court has power to try and entertain such type of cases of infringement. So, here we can say no suit for declaration under section 5105 or any relief under section 106 or infringement of patent shall be instituted in any court inferior to this district court. So, district court has the main power to try and entertain this case such type of cases of infringement whether it is related to the we can say civil cases or related to the criminal cases. So, it is the district court. So, if we see there are type of declaration, there is type of relief which we have already studied under section 106 or declaration of uh, we can file a case under section 105 for declaration of that particular property or such type of threat also. So, uh, we can say from here you can also go to the high court or you can go to the supreme court also. So, another uh, 104 is added now burden of proof is shifted from plaintiff to the defendant. That is the another important amendment was made in Indian Patent Act 1970, where burden of proof in case of suits concerning infringement is now we can say uh, shifted from now the court may direct the defendant to prove that process was used by him. Now, both cases are there whether it is a product or uh, this uh, process also. This is process or we can say product also. So, if you someone is infringing the process of some another uh, these uh, we can say al we already studied the Raj Prakash versus Mangat Ram or other cases are also there. If someone now is using the process or product of some other person then it is not the duty of the plaintiff to uh, prove its case. He can just file a case. Now, burden of proof onus lies on that particular defendant to prove ki he has not infringed the patent of uh, this patentee in that particular product or that particular process also. So, now changes has been made as per direction of the TRIPS or this uh, WTO. So, now another important section relating to the right of licensee as we have discussed some special uh, provision of section 84 in uh, another lecture that is related to the compulsory licensing. So, under compulsory licensing a person has a right of license. So, under that he can also take proceeding against infringement because now he is also a shareholder. He is also we can say co patentee with that original patentee. So, you can know under section 84 there are three essentials for getting compulsory licensing. So, what are these three essentials? We can say if there is no accessibility, accessibility if thing is not accessible, second thing is affordability or third thing is we can say that thing is not uh, in, uh, in territory of India or we can say in on the basis of public policy. So, when compulsory license is granted to some person, now he becomes a licensee. Now, he has also put his uh, foot in the we can say sure of that owner. So, now being an owner, being a patentee or being a license holder, now he has also right under this section 110 in case of infringement. So, compulsory licensing holder can file a case against the infringer also in this capacity. So, any person to whom the license has been granted under section 84 shall be entitled. Now, he can call upon the patentee original patentee who has invented that thing to take proceeding to prevent any infringement of the patent. So, he can also call upon the patentee first just like a legal notice he can also serve a uh, information to that particular patentee regarding infringement of that case. So, as only one compulsory license is granted in India that is in NATCO case. So, there is no case law or no example of this where this licensee under section 84 can go for the proceeding against infringement. So, we will also discuss the compulsory licensing case. So, here first he has to serve the information to that patentee. If patentee refused, so now he has given 
no, notice or the information to that particular patentee regarding infringement of that thing. Now, within two months after being called upon so, if patentee is refused or neglect that information and refuse in return, then license licensee may, licensee may go to another option. But uh, this uh, patentee also neglect then what it presume it is also presumed as refusal. So, after that now licensee may institute proceedings for the infringement on his own name. Now, licensee has get right to file a case against that particular uh, this infringer. So, he can now put his foot in the uh, we can see shoes of owner or the patentee. Now, every formality he has done as this patentee has neglecting or refusing to come as a petitioner with him. So, he can do his uh, on his own uh, he can take on its own initiative. So, though he were the patentee making the patentee as a defendant. So, he can also make a patentee as, uh, as a defendant also. So, but the patentee so added as a defendant shall not be liable for any cost unless he enter into appearance and take part in proceeding. So, we cannot make the original patentee as a we can say uh, become accountable for that. Although it is just like a performer defendant just for sake of uh, for our uh, to make strong our case to, uh, that is why that patent is we can say included as a defendant otherwise he is not accountable he is not liable for any damages or cost because it is not his fault. So, that uh, right of that patent is also protected under this provision of section 110. So, there is some another uh, this restriction under Indian Patent Act 1970 under section 111. So, this section is special inserted as restriction on the power to court grant damages or account of profit for infringement. As we have already studied this uh, civil remedies here and in this civil remedies we can say this injunction is there, account of profit is there or damage is there. So, under this case special section is inserted where there is restriction on the court to grant damages or account of profit for infringement. So, what are those cases? Though here as we say there is if there is no menseria in IPC or any other act then that is also we can say uh, exempted from uh, liability. So, here also in a suit for infringement of patent damage or account of profit shall not be granted against the defendant who proves that date of infringement he was not aware. So, it is clearly stated if someone is not aware relating to that, uh, that patent at particular date if he is bona fidely prove that he do not know about that particular thing. So, he and has no reasonable ground for believing that patent existing. So, both these conditions must be fulfilled for we can say particular act. So, he can be we can say uh, debar, he can be we can say restrain from giving or uh, making liable for that particular infringement. So, it is a bona fide case where everyone is exempted under this act or we can say in so many other acts also if someone is doing bona fidely or without any we can say uh, uh, menseria or without any we can say act that will be comes under exemption. So, in any suit for infringement of patent the court may if things fit refuse to grant damages or account of profit in spect of infringement committed after or failure to pay any renewal fees within the prescribed period. Now, here if the patentee has not renewal its own patent. So, how he is now say I am the patent holder? No, the that we can say as we have already discussed plaintiff should come with the clean hand similarly that law help only those who are vigilant. So, here if the patentee is not vigilant about expiration of his patent and someone is now using as patent is not renewal. So, he has right for using that patent. In so many cases also if you are not aware about your right. So, that another person can use your right if you are not vigilant about your right. So, on the principle of these vigilancy these uh, section is inserted in Indian Patent Act regarding now court will not grant account of profit also which is taken by the defendant or we can say uh, this damages also for that which uh, 
it may be simple or exemplary, but damage will not grant under these circumstances. So, now there are some defenses available against the infringement of patent. So, at one side we are talking about this, uh, uh, this uh, about rights of the patentee. Now, we have also this defenses available to uh, against the infringement of patent also, but in this slide or in this discussion we want to prove this act is going to make balance between we can say the right of patentee with the uh, this public interest also. So, it is as we have discussed in the first or second slide ki these rights are not we can say absolute in nature, these are limited in character. So, similarly when under the, these are the circumstances where defendant is not liable. So, here the defendant proves that he has not malafide intention as we have discussed. If he is using bona fidely or he has proved he has do not know about the this the patent is granted to that and it is proved then he is not accountable for that. Now, second case is uh, he, if he can that plaintiff can be debarred by the res judicata. If once a case is already decided by at some particular court, he cannot make liable the defendant again and again. So, and he can also be debarred by using principle of your yeah, doctrine of estoppel. So, estoppel can also bar that plaintiff from taking we can say making a accountable defendant for that. So, when the plaintiff is no locus standi, no locus standi or we can say not competent to file a case against defendant. In that case also case will be dismissed or this uh, defendant cannot liable for account of profit, damages or injunction. So, this is a very good provision which are uh, these defenses are given to the this defendant for protection of himself also. So, when patent is revoked. For example, we have discussed in earlier slide when patent is uh, we can say not renewed then also defendant is not liable. Similarly, in some circumstances when government of India or Indian patent office revoke the patent of patentee in that circumstances also uh, this defense is available to the defendant or here special ground is also given patent is revoked on the ground of its in being illegal. So, if some and this invention is illegal, now he has no right of patentee. So, so, another case is there in the case of medicines or pharmaceuticals, the government can allow to manufacture patented product for public goods also. So, as we see in the section 84 of this uh, Indian uh, Patent Act, government either sue motto or the application of any applicant can give, we can say compulsory licensing to any other person if there is no of accessibility of that medicine if there is no affordability then patent this government can allow any manufacturer to this uh, manufacture any patented product for public good. So, here also if government himself is going to allow. So, it is also comes we can say in uh, this defenses. So, in another case where the infringement is obvious and not novel if it is not uh, we can say uh, new in that case also that defense is available to this uh, uh, this defendant and in case of we can say that when the invention is obvious which is already prevailing in the society everyone know that publication is there for example, this uh, we can say it is obvious then defendant can use that particular these uh, uh, defenses for protection of himself. So, under th these are the special circumstances where a court can give judgment or dismiss the case of plaintiff or give judgment in favor of defendant also. So, we have already done civil remedy, criminal remedy and now third remedy is administrative remedy. So, under administrative remedy now power lies with the controller. So, controller has power either to uh, this uh, see the pre grant opposition here that uh, this we can see applicant be restrained in, in when the application is filed and publication is made and opportunity is given for the opposition which is also called pre grant opposition. So, here controller can use its power here also. Another remedy here is post grant opposition. So, when 
patent is already granted and now some a person who does not vigilant and came to know about the this uh, that patent is granted in my field or to my invention to some another person. So, that is also violation he has two remedies either to go to the co civil court or he can also go to the uh, uh, take this step also under administrative remedy he can file a post grant opposition even though patent is granted. Okay, so, these remedies are filed before the either controller or joint controller, deputy controller as we have done this in uh, this uh, 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 patent authorities or we can say assistant controller. So, as the jurisdiction is uh, this divided uh, we can say territorial jurisdiction is there of patent office throughout India, four patent offices are there. So, the person who is residing in that particular jurisdiction can file a this application for post grant opposition can file an objection relating to that in particular office. So, now most important remedy is by the controller is we can say compulsory licensing. So, compulsory licensing special provisions are there section 83, 84 to 89. Now, government has to see in which cases compulsory license is granted. We can say from 1856 when first English patent act was passed to 2024, no compulsory license is granted except one. So, one compulsory license is granted which was given to the NATCO. So, we can see the compulsory licensing is a although Brahmastra in the hand of government of India, special provisions is also made by the trips regarding protection of interest of a particular country. So, under this compulsory licensing can also be granted by the controller as an administrative remedy. It can be taken as a sue motto or by we can say uh, application of any interested person. We will discuss in another lecture relating to that. So, just I want to case last uh, one last case here this Pepsi incorporation uh, which has also we can say producer of lead chips they have a patent in their name of potato that is F felt 2027 which was protected under protection of plant variety and farmer's right act even though this is also a patent, but this, that is related to plant which is under protection of plant variety act. So, Pepsi assured the 11 farmers and when and asked for compensation 1 crore from each. So, the agitation was also there by the farmers, but in the interest of public the controller or we can say the that particular Indian government has also uh, this withdraw the certificate of Pepsi relating to this potato patent. So, now by these remedies we have to see ki what type of remedy one person want to avail or second thing is now it is depend on the government also ki government has to take protection of the patent also and the take protection of the general public also. So, by way of these uh, civil remedies, criminal remedies and administrative remedies government is protecting the interest of patent also, but side by side it has also protect the interest of general public by allowing the compulsory licensing or we can say pre grant opposition at a specific time which was the need of general public. So, thank you very much.